If variety is the spice of life, then why do we keep using the same arrow cursor all the time? Well, lucky for us, custom cursors in Framer let us design unique cursor styles that match our brand and respond to interactions. In this lesson, we'll look at a few different approaches for adding custom cursors to our sites. To set a custom cursor, first we gotta decide where on the page that cursor should appear in the first place. We'll start with something simple. We'll replace the cursor with something a little more interesting, no matter where the cursor is on the entire page, which we accomplish by first selecting the desktop breakpoint and then coming down here to the properties panel and clicking the cursor section. We get a few different options here. We have web cursor, which lets us choose from some of the default cursors that are built into the operating system. Then we have custom cursor, where we can pick one of our own components. And then we have set variant, which requires a little bit more setup. We're gonna come back to that one in just a little bit, but I'll show you real quick that if I choose web cursor, we get these familiar cursors that are built into our operating system that show up in various circumstances, like when we hover over something that can be grabbed and dragged, or when we hover over something that can be moved. And these can be really useful, especially if you're creating interactions within your own components and you wanna give the visitor a little signifier or affordance that something can be clicked or can be dragged. That's what the OS uses them for in the first place. They're contextual and they change depending on what you're hovering the cursor over. But because what we're trying to do here is sort of get creative with the cursor for the entire page, I'm not gonna choose one of these. We're gonna do a custom cursor instead. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna right click on our web cursor here and I'm going to remove it. And I did do a small amount of setup here. I have created components for each of the cursors that we're going to be setting throughout this particular lesson. So if I scoot over to the left just a little bit, you can see I've got an instance of this component that's really just a white dot. But if I double click on it, I do have a pressed state for that white dot. So if I preview this, when we click down on the white dot, it does get a little bit smaller. And this press interaction actually will work with our cursor. So we'll get that extra little bit of tactile feedback when we click the mouse down. So I'll go back here and I'm gonna go all the way back to the home page that we were on before. And now with the desktop breakpoint selected, I'll come back down to cursor and this time I'll choose custom cursor. And when I choose custom cursor, I can choose from any one of the components that are in this project. I'm gonna choose cursor dot, that's the one we were just looking at. And then I get to choose if I want that cursor dot component to follow the cursor or replace the cursor. I'll start with replace and I'll show you what follow looks like in the next example. And then the last property here is transition. And what transition is gonna do is add a little bit of easing between the input of moving the cursor around and the actual cursor moving on the screen. It kind of smooths out the movement. When you're replacing a cursor, this can feel a bit like input lag. It kind of decouples your input from the visual feedback that you're getting on the screen. So I'm not gonna do that with replace. I'll show you what that looks like with follow in a moment. But really all I'm doing here is saying, anytime the cursor is within the desktop breakpoint, replace the little arrow with my cursor dot component. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna press Command P on my Mac to go into preview here. And there we go. Now I have my cursor dot component instead of my little arrow, it's been replaced. And if I click, I get that interaction that I created within the component. So I get a little visual feedback every time I click the mouse. Now let's say we don't wanna replace the default cursor. We just wanna add a little visual element to spice things up a bit. So I'm gonna leave the preview here and I'm gonna to head to the next page. And for this example, you can see I've got a similar sort of big white dot. And if I click into this, you can see that I have a press state where the dot gets a little smaller. But the key thing with this is that I've added a blending mode of difference to the white dot here. And what that's gonna do is invert whatever the white dot hovers over, kind of like a little X-ray that's floating around following my cursor. So let me go back to the canvas here and let's see it in action. I'm gonna select the desktop breakpoint, come back down here to cursor, add a custom cursor. And in this case, I'm going to choose the cursor inverted component. That's the name that I happen to give this component. And now the big distinction here is instead of setting this to replace, we're gonna set this to follow instead. And with follow, we get quite a few extra settings because we get to decide how the component that's following the cursor around is gonna be positioned relative to the default cursor. So I want it positioned relative to the top of the default cursor, and I want to align the center 
of the component with the cursor. And the offset is currently set to zero, zero, but let's see what that looks like as is. I'm gonna press Command P to go into preview mode here. And then here we go. We've got the component aligned with the top of the cursor and we've got it centered up with the cursor pointer, which is the very tip of the cursor. But I kind of want the cursor to be in the middle of the dot rather than the cursor being at the bottom of the dot. So I'm gonna go back. And because the height of that dot is about 60 pixels, I'm just gonna add a Y offset of 30 to move it by half of its own height, which should get us aligned with the middle of it. The middle is half of the total height. So I'll press Command P again, and there we go. Now the tip of the cursor is aligned with the middle of the dot. And as I mouse over, you can see that we've got our difference blending mode giving us that sort of X-ray effect. And you'll also notice that the dot is kind of trailing behind my cursor. It's following, but it's following almost kind of loosely. That's what the transition property does. So let's go back. I'm gonna leave preview mode and let's head back over to the popover. And you can see that there is in fact a spring transition here. If I get rid of that and we preview this again, see now we have a very rigid relationship between the position of the cursor and the position of the component that's following it. But you can really do what you want with this. This is a creative decision. We're not replacing the cursor, so we're not hijacking the movement when we apply a transition that adds a little bit of delay. That doesn't translate to input lag because we still have that one-to-one -one control over the default cursor itself. The component that's following it around, that's just icing on the cake. So now I'm gonna leave preview mode and I'm gonna take us to the third page to show you the next example. Earlier, I promised I would show you what set cursor does. So in this example, we're gonna make the cursor dynamically change and transition from one cursor to another, depending on where we hover. So before we do that, I wanna give you a quick tour of the component I created for this cursor ahead of time. If I double click on this guy, you can see that I've created a cursor that starts off as a dot, but then that dot can expand to reveal some text. And we have a few different labels here. We have hover, press, loop, and drag, which are kind of like little tool tips that are gonna describe the things that we hover over. That's the gist of the setup. So I'm gonna head back to the canvas and we're gonna start the same way that we always do. I'm gonna select the desktop breakpoint, come down here, click to add a cursor. We're gonna do a regular old custom cursor. And in this case, we're gonna make sure that we have the right components selected. This one is called cursor labels. And we're gonna start with the default variant, which is going to replace the cursor, which should just give us that dot. Let's preview this. Let's make sure we're on track. I'll press Command P and then here we go. So very much like the first example we did, we are replacing the cursor with a particular variant of a component. Now let's get fancy with it. I'm gonna go back and now we're gonna go down to these little elements here, which I would like to be able to hover over and get a different label depending on which one of these we're hovering over. So we'll start with the first one. With this particular frame selected, I'm gonna come back over to the properties panel. I'm gonna add the cursor property again. And now we have the option of set variant because we have a component that has variants set at the highest level, the breakpoint itself. So now we can get more specific about elements that are children of that breakpoint. So this being one of them, I'm gonna click set variant and here we get to choose which variant it is we wanna to switch to. Hover label is the one that I wanna use for this one. For the second one, we'll use press. For the third one, we'll use loop. And for the fourth one, we'll use drag. But for this one, again, hover and that's it. We're just saying switch to the hover variant when I hover over this particular frame. So again, we'll preview and I get my default variant when I hover the cursor anywhere over the breakpoint, except when I hover the cursor over this particular frame. And there we go. The cursor now switches variants because these variants exist within that component. And like the interactive components we created earlier in the course, Framer automatically animates the transitions from one variant to another. So we get this awesome smooth transition from the default cursor to the hover variant. Now let's combine what we did in the last two examples and create a little tooltip that follows the cursor around. So I'm gonna leave the preview here and I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna select the breakpoint itself. So that way I can come back over here and I can change this from replace to follow. And for this one, I want the tooltip to be to the right of the cursor and aligned with the middle of it, sort of. I do want the tooltip to be below and to the right of where the cursor is. So I'm gonna make sure I have this X offset of positive 20, which is gonna push it to the right, and this Y offset of 20, which is gonna push it down. 
So let's see where we're at. I'm gonna press Command P to preview this. And you can see that this little dot following the cursor is to the right of the cursor and it's pushed a little bit over and a little bit down with the offset property. And if we hover over this frame, there we go. We get our full tooltip following the cursor just a little bit down and to the right. But this little dot is annoying. We don't necessarily want a little dot following the cursor all the time. So I'm gonna go back and let's fix that by going into the component itself and adding a new variant. So I'm gonna select this default variant here because what I'm gonna create is similar to that. We're just not going to see the white fill inside of the dot and that's easy enough. I'm just gonna come down here, find the fill property, click on that and bring the opacity all the way down to zero. And then to make things a little bit more clear for myself later, I'm going to rename this variant hidden. So now I can go back to the desktop breakpoint and where I choose that default cursor that's gonna follow around, rather than using my default variant, which was the white dot, I'm gonna use my new variant that I've named hidden. And when I press Command P to preview, there we go. Now my cursor is flying solo and I get my transition to that hover variant when I hover over this frame. So we're super close. Let's just finish the job and add the tooltips for these other frames. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit and with this frame selected, I'm going to add a cursor, choose set variant, make sure that I have the right variant selected, which in this case is gonna be press. And then I'll add one to this third frame, set variant, loop label. And this last one is going to be my drag label variant. So now we should be good to go. I'll press command P. We've got our nice clean cursor. And when we come down here, we've got our little tool tips that animate in and transition from one to the other depending on where our cursor is hovered. And there you have it. Custom cursors can be informative, add personality, and make our sites feel more immersive. And now you know a few different ways to go about it in Framer. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.